and uh, yeah, there's a sign. Plants get sick too. Well, we're going into the Plant Pathology Research Laboratory where my technician Kala Parker is getting ready to make some auger medium today. So let's follow Kala into the lab and uh, watch her as she prepares. Today I think she's making cornmeal auger for some of our Phytophthora cultures. So I'm going to get over here out of her way and let her go to work. Okay, Kala. First we've got to weigh out the ingredients and fortunately for us now cornmeal auger comes in a dehydrated powder that has an extract from ground up corn and uh, it's also got the auger already incorporated so uh, we're going to weigh out how many grams Carla? Well this is a half liter so it's 8.5 grams. Okay it's a half liter so it's 8.5 grams of the cornmeal auger extract. Almost got it. That's the technique, just to get a little bit. Sometimes you get too much, you gotta go back and try again. Just get the right amount. Okay. Here we go. Now she's gonna combine that with water here in a um, one liter. Erlenmeyer flask. And add her water. Now notice when you're making auger, you only fill the flask about half full. And you're really careful when you swirl it so that you don't get the auger powder up on the um, side of the flask much. Just want to get it distributed evenly in there. And then Kala is going to top off the flask with some aluminum foil. And then we're going to walk over here to the autoclave. Ah, oh, there's the autoclave. Okay, it's a small volume autoclave. Runs off electricity, heats up a reservoir of water. Okay. We're setting the time for, let's look here to dial, see if we can focus in on that. It's set for about 20 minutes time, and the timer's going to start when the pressure gets up to 100 and, uh, excuse me, the temperature gets up to 121 degrees centigrade. All right. All right, once the auger has come out of the autoclave, we put it into a constant temperature water bath at about 50 degrees. This is because that auger is so hot that it, in, in some cases, is superheated. So you want it to cool down to around 50 to C before you pour your plates. Um, and so this water bath step just allows the auger to to uh, cool off gradually to a temperature that we can work with it and, and, and pour the plate. So Kala is going to go ahead now and get the flask ready to, to go so she can pour her plates. All right, she's got petri plates there and the way these plates are designed, they have uh, ridges around the the uh, edge of the plates so that you can stack them and they won't slide off. They'll, they'll, they'll sit in stacks of 20 or so. Right now she's flaming the neck of the uh, Erlenmeyer flask to kill any uh, spores that might have landed in there in the, while it was in the water bath. Now she's adding the auger a bit at a time to the plates. Notice her technique, how she's lifting the lid of the next plate above. She's pouring a stack of about five plates at a time. And she's pouring the auger about halfway across the plate or so. And then she's going to swirl the plates to uh, uniformly disperse the auger and set them aside to cool. And she repeats this process until the whole half liter of uh, auger is, is poured. 
and uh, it's important here to have the auger cool off. You can see very well in the in the camera lens, but you don't want air bubbles in that auger, and that's what happens if you try the porta plates when they're too hot. You can get air bubbles, and uh, that really messes up your ability to look at the fungi on the place once you've got your cultures going. So no air bubbles. Okay, and we're we're ending up with about probably 15 mLs of of uh, auger in each plate. And uh, once the plates have cooled off further, the auger is going to solidify. And you're going to have a nice, clean, clear um, plate of auger to, to use for, for your pure culture work.